Hi and welcome to the next set of videos on optimization models for revenue management. In the last few videos we talked about EMSR, EMSR and we used EMSR to calculate leg level revenue management controls. Now we're ready to move into the models that calculate network level controls and we're going to start well, the first model we're going to start with is something called virtual nesting. Now let me take a minute to review the difference between leg level and network level or O and D level control and why airlines can benefit from moving from leg level to O and D. Let me go pull up another video. So this is a screenshot of a video I did on levels of inventory control and I illustrated the difference between leg and O and D control, you can call this O and D or network control, by creating this very small network and then a set of itinerary fares. Some of those fares are local fares. So for example, JFK Miami, I created some fares that are uh, for traveling just from JFK to Miami. And then I created some fares from Boston to Miami so these customers would connect through JFK to Miami. These customers would connect from LAX through JFK to Miami. And then the difference between leg versus O and D control can be seen down here. So this is the same example we used in the, in the EMSR videos though with, with different fares. Leg level control basically ignores what else is going on in the network and calculates protection levels for the leg assuming that these are the only fares it has to consider. So if we had one seat left, so we assume there's one seat left from JFK to Miami, we ask what is the revenue management decision? Well, if you had three different fares and one seat left and you had sufficient demand for, for all fares, you would close off the B fare, the M fare, and you would take the Y fare customer. O and D control goes one step further. O and D considers that there are customers flying in the Y class, traveling in the Y class, who are originating from different points and paying different fares. So now O and D control says if I have one seat left, I want to allocate it to Y class customers, but which Y class customer would I prefer to take? Would I prefer to take the JFK Miami customer, the LAX Miami customer that is paying $600, or the Boston Miami customer who's paying $375? Now the answer isn't quite as obvious as to say we'd like this customer because he's taking two seats and we'll get into that in the network models. But that's basically the difference. Leg level control allows you to calculate a protection level using this information. O and D control allows you to consider the entire network when making a decision at the leg level. So now the question is, how can we move beyond leg level control to capture some of these network effects that would clearly improve revenue? Well, in theory, what you could do is instead of calculating three protection levels as we did at the leg level, you could calculate nine protection levels for all the fares that are transversing this leg. So, you know, these, these letters are just indexes instead of YBM, you could call it Y1, Y2, Y3 and calculate uh, three different protection levels for Y class customers and same thing for B and M. Well, that would work in theory, but in practice it's infeasible for two reasons. One is the number of controls in a real airlines network would be very large. And two, there's a practical limitation with the reservation system. So particularly back in the 1980s when these models were being developed, airline reservation systems were limited to the number of letters in the alphabet. So you could only have 26 controls uh, on each leg. And even if you could move beyond that limitation, the, you know, if you had, you know, a hundred different protection levels, which would be quite reasonable for the number of itineraries and fare classes uh, traveling uh, across one leg in an airline's network, it would become just too cumbersome. You couldn't, you couldn't manage it. The analysts couldn't manage it. American Airlines developed a method that worked within the limitations of the reservation systems 
and that was called virtual nesting. Their approach was they would still calculate protection levels at the leg level, but instead of using these fair values and fair classes, they would create something called virtual buckets, which were defined by fair ranges. They would then map the itinerary fair classes into these buckets based on their network contribution and then calculate protection levels for these buckets. And then the inventory was controlled at the bucket level instead of the fair class level. And in this way, they were getting to, they were able to get to a finer level of control, not full O and D control. So they weren't able to discriminate between each itinerary, but they were better able to choose the higher value customers within these buckets. And I'm going to show you an example that illustrates this. I've copied the sample network over to my Blackboard, and I changed the fair values just so that the uh, example works out well. And we're going to use this information to calculate a uh, virtual nesting control mechanism. This is going to be a little tight. You can see I have a, a chart down here, a table here I want to use. And we're going to create virtual buckets. We're going to find, define fair ranges. And then we're going to map each one of these itineraries into these buckets. So I'm just going to have to scroll up and down here so you can see everything on the page. The first thing we need to do is decide how many buckets we're going to have. So this would be like fair classes in leg level control, but instead of calling them letters like Y, B, M, H, Q, we're just going to call them uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we're going to use 5 buckets for this example. So 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we're going to calculate protection levels for 5 buckets. The next thing we need to do is define the value ranges. The way you would do this, and it can become much more complex than this, but the idea is we want to be able to choose, for example, between these three different YFAIR customers. So we want the value range to be smaller than the range of these fares. So we don't want the value range, for example, to be 300 to 400 dollars because then all of the Y customers would fall into that range and we wouldn't get any finer level of control. So let's choose for the for the first bucket the value range we're going to say is 350 to 400 and that will capture just these top two value itineraries. So we're going to say the value here I think this is still on the screen is from 350 to 400. Now if we say the next range is 300 to 349, we'll capture another two itineraries. So let me just scroll back up here and we'll say the next one is 300 to 349. And then we'll just use some nice uh, even ranges. They don't have to be but we'll just say this one is 250 to 299, uh, 200 to 249, oops, and then whatever, 0 to 199. So now we're ready to map our itineraries to our virtual buckets. So before we had nine itineraries in three different fair classes. Now we have nine itineraries to map to five virtual buckets. So we simply look at the fair value for the itinerary and map it to the appropriate bucket. So let's start with the highest value itinerary. And it's uh, LAX Miami in the Y class at $400. That itinerary maps to the first bucket because it falls in this range. So we're going to write in our mapping here LAX to Miami and the Y class is in virtual bucket one. Then we look for the next highest value itinerary. It's Boston, Miami at 375. Also is mapped to uh, bucket one in the Y class. The next highest value itinerary is JFK, Miami in the Y class at 325. But that maps to the second bucket because it falls in this value range. And now you can see how we're getting a finer level of inventory control with virtual nesting 
than we would get from a fair class leg level control because we are going to map this itinerary in a lower bucket, JFK Miami in the Y class. So we, now we don't have all three Y fares together. They're in two different buckets. Uh, the next highest value is LAX Miami in the B class. And then the next one, let's just do one more and then I'll complete this. Oh, I'm sorry if this ran off the page. So I think you can see that now. Let me just go back up and see the next highest value is, I believe, the Boston Miami in the B class at 275. So we'll write that one here. Boston Miami in the B class. And I'll just fill these in now. So I completed this mapping for you. Now we have the nine different itineraries mapped to five different virtual buckets instead of the three different fare classes that we had before. So you can see we're going to get a finer level of inventory control here. And I see we're running kind of long, so we'll pick this up in the next video.